everyone! So I'm so sorry I haven't had a chance to vlog after placement when I got back. I've been really tired and gone to sleep. So I'm really sorry about that. So I'm just going to take this opportunity now just to run through how amazing my week's been. So this week I've done my usual things, day-to-day um, -day things. Um, I've done a lot of wound dressings, I've removed clips. I have had to pad wounds because they've been oozing out and they've been there was one that exploded a little bit so that was interesting to see and I had to go and grab the doctor and the nurse because it just wasn't right at all and we had to pack it and I can't go into too much detail because of confidentiality it's really hard not to um, but I'm just gonna say it was really grim if you don't like wounds and gore and things like that but it was interesting for me to see and um, sort of deal with that sort of situation it was really good for my learning I think and to be put in that sort of under pressure environment I suppose if you can call it that and what else have I done this week a lot of admissions a lot of discharges we have done a lot of bladder washouts we have sent off a lot of urine samples for UTIs, MRSA swabs. We've had a few patients that have been really unwell so doing them extra monitoring and observations on them. We've had a couple of patients that have needed just that extra care and that extra time because they have dementia but on top of that they are just that little bit more confused because of surgery and they've been pulling out their cannulas and the catheters and all these things that they really really need but they don't have the capacity to understand how much they need these things and it's been interesting it's been a really interesting week to be honest i've really enjoyed this week i've been so busy as well in between my placements i've been doing all these extra things on my day off so i am feeling it and i just want to say this now when you're out there on your placement make the most of your days off you'll have three long days and then you'll have four days off but i'm the sort of person that likes to keep busy so i do all these extra things on my days off and never have any time to myself so that's why i'm so tired guys it's not because um it's that tough on me it's not it's just i'm busy and i make myself busy and it's my own fault so yeah so now whilst we're talking about the patients that we've got on the wards that have dementia i'm going to introduce you now to my friend ignar rip who um i actually connected to ignar through twitter and the power of t twitter and connecting people and it was just amazing and Ignar is so passionate about dementia and helping patients with dementia through music. Music is just such a powerful tool and it's the most underused thing that that's out there right now. And I met up with Ignar and it was just amazing. And we had a little chat about dementia and what he does and what it's all about. I'm just gonna, I did a little video for you because I wanted to show you Ignar because he's fabulous and just let me know what you think of the video below and please don't forget to check out Ignar's links because I'm going to put all the details below because he's absolutely fantastic and you need to go and follow his page and have a look at the website, have a little bit more, have a, have a little read about um, what he does with those with dementia and he won an award because he's amazing. Um, I've actually done a separate vlog on the Fab Awards that I went to on Thursday, which was absolutely amazing. You're not going to want to miss this video. This video is going to be fantastic, 1948 style. It's it's amazing. I'm going to post it um, probably Monday or Tuesday, either Monday or Tuesday this week. Um, just keep an eye out for it. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already subscribed and keep an eye out for that. But yes, I'm going to show you me and Ignar now when we met up. Hi everyone. Look, I'm awake. I'm fresh. I'm clean. I'm not on placement. I've got two days off and it is the eve of the of the Fab Awards 2018. If you don't know what the Academy of Fabulous Stuff is, why not? Go back and watch my vlog all about it. It's absolutely amazing. I'm going to put the link above. So please, after you watch this vlog, go and click it and see what it's all about because you need to be involved with it. If you work in the healthcare setting, profession, anywhere in the world, whole worldwide, please take a look at this and see how you can get involved for next year and be part of this amazing event. So tomorrow is all about the awards. It is gonna be a 1940s themed event with free food and drink. 
amazing. So I've been really honoured. This is a massive privilege to be invited as actually somebody's guest to go along to these award ceremonies, see all of these amazing people go up and get their awards. I'm really, really excited for some of the people because quite a few of them are on my Twitter page and I, I go and I read their blogs and things and I'm really excited to meet them, really excited to see them and hopefully I'll get some videos as well for you because everybody needs to see how amazing these people are. So I'm going to get some videos. Um, if I can speak to people and they're happy for me to take a video of them, I will do that and you'll see that in this video. Um, but it's going to be amazing. It's 1940s. I think I've said that. I'm really excited. I'm going to speak 100 miles an hour. I'm sorry. I'm really excited. It's going to be free food, free drinks. I'm going to meet some absolutely amazing people and I'm going alone. I don't know anybody actually that's going. I just know of people on social media and Twitter. So it's going to be really nice to put a face to the tweets and things. So that's going to be really interesting. But I am going alone. I'm really anxious about it. I'm really scared. People often think I'm this massive extrovert and I'm confident. Uh, I'm not. Don't tell anybody this, but I'm not. I'm going to be really, really scared. I'm going to have a glass of wine. <laughs> and lighten up and I'm gonna go out and I'm gonna speak to people so it's gonna be good um but here's my fancy dress I'm not gonna show you all I will show you it later when it's on not later tomorrow when it's on this is the top of it it's like a 1940s evening dress I suppose I don't know when I googled 1940s that's the sort of style that came up so I'm hoping I've got it right if not sorry about that I've also got some brogues look how beautiful these brogues are so i've got some fancy brogues and yeah that's my outfit sorted for tomorrow i shall show it all tomorrow anyway when i go in but today i'm going heading down to london a day early i'm going to be there tonight i'm going to meet up with the fantastic ignar who i'll get a video because ignar is the most amazing person i know he's fantastic i'm going to put a link to his youtube page below in all the details any details below please look at them click on the links read about people it's going to be amazing and i'm really annoyed because i got ignar a present and it hasn't arrived i ordered it like a month ago Sorry, Ignar, if you're watching this to let the cow out of the bag. But I ordered it like a month ago and it's not arrived yet. So I need to chase that up. And when it arrives, I can send it to him. So, yeah, it was really good as well. I can't tell you or show you it because then he'll see it. So if he watches the video. So anyway, I'm going to get ready and I'm going to leave for London. Hi, so I'm here finally with Ignarip. Finally, um, a pleasure to meet you. And we're going to talk to you all about dementia and music. Well, you are. <laughs> <laughs> it's really great to, f uh, to meet you, Claire. Yeah, yeah. I see your vlogs and I love them. Thank you. Because and check out Ignar's channel. I'm going to put the links below. <laughs> and the website. <laughs> I love your vlogs because you really put in there so much passion about uh, the people in healthcare. Thank you. So here we have Ignar's music box. Do you want to explain to people the importance of this? I can. Like, yeah. <laughs> of course I can. Uh, well, everybody knows that music is important. But how do you find the music that resonates with a person with dementia? Well, the first thing is that you do is that you go looking which music was popular uh, when the person with dementia was between his 50 and 25 years. Because all the music we have heard between that years is so deeply rooted mm -hmm. that even dementia cannot destroy this memory music memories so all the music you have heard claire between your 50 and 23 <laughs> years will never 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 leaves you it never leaves me now to be fair <laughs> <laughs> when you hear it when you are yeah, 80 yeah, years yeah, and you know i was there i was doing that i was dancing and what close I had on. So this music is really bringing those feeling of when you was on the top of the world and you think I can conquer all the world. Very powerful music. The second way to find the right music, you can use I have a look, the music <laughs> discovery list. You can find them on our website. You can download it uh, or print it out. And with this questionnaire, you will find someone's favorite music because 
your favorite music player mm -hmm. does not have to be the same as the music at the 50, 25 music. With, but I think uh, between your 50 and 25 you go to dancing or disco? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Is that still your favorite music? No. <laughs> well, you see. But that yeah. music that you have heard then, mm -hmm. if you heard it about over 50 years, mm -hmm. it brings back those memories when you were going out, yeah. having fun, yeah. feeling good. But with this list, I can find Claire's personal favorite mm -hmm. music. So I ask, what kind of singer do you like? Well, it'd be 90s music, probably, okay. for me. <laughs> and what was singer? Oh God, the Backstreet Boys. All right, the Backstreet Boys. Yeah, Hanson. Hanson. Bewitched. Okay, that's good. And Spice Girls, of course. <laughs> and what, what is very... Take that. All right, great. A very important is that, that you never judged. All music is good. There is no mm. bad music. There is no good music. Every music is good. So all the songs you find in the 5025 rule and with the music discovery list, you throw that songs in your music box. Just throw them in. Don't think about this. Just throw them in the music box. And when you have few songs, more songs in your music box, you start to look what's belonging to morning music, waking up or at the showering or activating somebody or sleeping. And very important is that the only thing that you know you have to write music is when you do and try. Mm -hmm. Because uh, the trap is that most people think they knew what kind of music a person like. But through the dementia, it can change. It can totally change. So the only way to find it out is by doing and trying. See if the music mm -hmm. is resonate with the person. And then, only then, you know I have the right music. What do you think, Claire? I love it. Would, would that work? <laughs> yeah. Yeah? I think so. How do you think in, how could we incorporate in hospitals, like on the wards with patients? What do you think? Well, that is, um, what I always say is that dementia care, you can't do it alone. Mm -hmm. uh, not at home. Uh, not in a hospital or not in a care home. It, it, it's too much. Or you can say we have too many nurses or care workers mm. that's all the way around. But you need the family and you need mm. uh, the volunteers. So you have to engage them. You have to ask them, please help us. Mm. So if a person with dementia is going to a hospital, uh, you have to uh, pack his pyjama, mm. his toothbrush, mm and his playlist because then you can give the person some handholds and most hospitals have got radios so you can always play the radio maybe yes depending on what station <laughs> that, well that is uh, that is one that's very good of you claire that you say that because most of people sing, uh, think music oh we turn on the radio mm. But most of the time, the radio is music of this time. Yeah. So that music has does not to resonate mm. with the person. So it's very important that you create special playlists for that mm. person. And maybe you know, Claire, but most people with dementia going into a hospital, hospital, leaving the hospital uh, fit mentally worse mm. than they came in. Yeah, that's true. So the broken hip mm. is meant done perfect, but the mind. Yeah, go away, mm -hmm. a few steps. And with the right music, you could help the person with it. <laughs> you, you, have, you have yourself, you have um, that volunteer work with... Yeah, also. yeah, I did with the dementia, um, better understanding dementia in Sandwell in Dudley. Okay, well, what did really you do? Nice. Um, it was mainly activities, so 
they did, um, they sat down and they played games, like memory games. They had a memory box, so they had the old um, things that they used to, like the old whisk, um, what else, the old washing board yeah. that used to wash clothes on. They had the old aprons and things, the old mixers, um, the old, oh God, what is it called? Like the Barbie dolls that go in the toilet roll. Yeah, Do you yeah. have those in Holland? <laughs> No, we don't have them. <laughs> okay, it's okay. <laughs> There's like the old toilet roll thing, and they love that because it brings back all the memories. Um, and then in the afternoon, they did like a song session where they played all the different songs, and they all um, did exercises like with the legs and the arms um, to get the body working, the brain working. It was nice. It was so really they, good. So they combined the music with activities? Yeah, yeah. Like okay. the physical and the mental. It's, it was really nice. It's really powerful see, yeah. because uh, if you use music with activities, mm -hmm. music is activated the brain, mm -hmm. so it makes going with activities easier. Yeah. And what was the reaction with uh, with the people of dementia when they loved it? You loved they it. They were really happy. Yeah, they were having a great time. <laughs> okay. <laughs> they were laughing. They were clapping. They were smiling, and they just left on a high. It was nice. It was really good. And it's really, it, it's so simple. Mm. It's so, really so simple that you can so much joy by the simple things. Mm. And they love also when you come with uh, the objects of the past. Yeah. Or all the things yeah. you share. Yeah, it's nice. And they had pictures as well. So they had pictures of like the Victorian times and all these different different eras that they could go through. It's nice. And it's also because a person with... <laughs> that is also uh, very important because for a person his home feeling is going back not back to the future no. it's, back, it's back to the past <laughs> so a person with dementia does not recognize his mm. own home mm. or the surrounding he's in it mm. but that's true. Yeah. Yeah. and that's frightened you, you can uh, you hear people often say, I'm going home, mm. I don't live here, mm. let me go, please let me go. Yeah, and they always ask for the mother and father when they're, they've passed. Of course. Because they still think they're that child again. Of course, they, they, they're living in the past. Yeah. So when we create an environment where they have handholds or they find things mm. from their past, you give them some home feeling some safety and when you do that you can uh, unless you can lesser problem behavior unrest and run away urges and you can easily do that you look to the person look what he has done in his life uh, think about in the period what kind of colors mm. things they were and just put those objects mm. in his room yeah i agree it's nice <laughs> And it, it, it's really it's nice for them. It's something familiar, I think, especially if they're in a hospital setting as well, because then it's really hard. Yes, the hospital is yeah. is a very hard setting, uh, but it's also a little bit difficult uh, to mm. put in much objects. Yeah, but you can bring some things and put it on the table. Everything helps, I think. No, it helps. It mm. does. The little things are the big things. Mm. So indeed, just Claire is saying, take little things with you. You can also think uh, photographs. You can put yeah. photographs on the wall and don't mind if the nursing say, oh, we don't do that here. Mm. You say, <laughs> yeah, well, no. People do say that. So. Yeah, well, they <laughs> may say so. But you can say that Igmar has told you <laughs> that a hospital is not a museum, okay. is not a place where they keep walls safe. A hospital is a place where they mend and care for people. And if mm. care is putting on some really nice pictures, some person has home feelings, then you do that. Yeah. And you can send them to me if they don't want it. To and do. to me. <laughs> and, to, and to Claire. And we'll see coming. Whoa. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> and I'm ready. And this is my dress.